The Eric Geiger Leadership Podcast is part of the Church Leaders Podcast Network, which is dedicated to resourcing leaders to face the complexities of ministry. The Church Leaders Podcast Network supports pastors and ministry leaders by challenging assumptions, providing insights, and offering practical steps that will help them navigate a variety of cultures and contexts. Learn more at churchleaders.com slash podcast network. Welcome to the final episode of the Eric Geiger Leadership Podcast on succession. We're going to end with some pleasant surprises. So in the previous episode, we talked about challenges. We've given an overview of how secession has worked in the context where I serve and my predecessor, Ken Shore serves as well. But on this episode, we're going to talk about the beauty on the other side of the pain. So last episode was, there's some pain. There's some pain involved in leadership. There is no such thing as leadership without pain, and there's no such thing as succession without pain. But if you will hang on and constantly leave your ego beside on the ground and press forward with the health of the church as the number one priority or the health of the of the organization, the ministry as the number one priority, you can get to the beauty of the pleasant surprises. And so we're going to end this season talking about some pleasant surprises. Four and a half years in, Ken, we've been doing this for four and a half years. So good. What? That didn't sound very authentic right there. So good. It is. I think I'm excited. I'll tell you why I'm excited. So no good. good. No, so I'm so excited. You know what? The One of the most, the most pleasant surprise of all is that I get to be a part of a new thing, a new day, doing new things I could never have done. So I really do love that. I love where the church is and I love sitting down and when I talk to you and I get to hear what the church is doing, where it's going, that I don't have to sit on the sidelines off somewhere watching it from a distance. I get to be a part of it, which is like such a great gift. So it it makes it worse. Whatever the pains are, you wouldn't want to miss that. So for me, the biggest surprises have been, uh, I made the transition because I felt like it was time for me to do a new thing. So I wanted to mentor senior pastors. I wanted to continue to teach and I wanted to bless. And I got to do all of that. And I get to do it at Mariners through Mariners. So I get to teach and take the teaching ministry of Mariners, extend that. I get to mentor senior pastors and got great groups of guys that I get to help them and feel like I get to take a a part of all of what I learned at Mariners and what Mariners is learning and extend it and press it into their lives of other churches. So other churches are better because of what we do. And then I get to uh, be a part of your life. You get to invite in. So I get to talk about what the church is. You make me feel like I bring value, which is just beyond imagination. And then I really get to be a part. I don't, I don't miss it. Meaning that what Mariners is doing now is so exciting. If I was watching from a distance, I would be, there would be such a sadness that, wow, I was a part of it. Now nothing, uh, I don't know how you would do it. I don't know how somebody would do it. So whatever pain, those have been. What's so good to hear. No, so glad best surprises. That. So what about you? What are the big surprises for you? <clears throat> I knew that I would benefit from your wisdom the first six months, the first year, you know, if someone said how long, I, I, I don't know if I'd have said a year, 18 months, I knew I'd want you around longer, but I thought in my head that, um, I wouldn't maybe need your wisdom as much for such a long period of time. I I'm just thinking back to the last five days. So in the last five days, I've had two conversations with you that added significant value to me as a leader and i think both helped helped our church uh, so you sit at the 4 p.m it's our first saturday night service you come and you take notes i knew you were going to do that the first six months i did not if you had asked me four years ago would he still be doing that four and a half years in i in my head there's no way on a saturday afternoon that you would come every single week and sit there and and I've never even asked you. You just keep doing it, and I'm so thankful. So that's been a surprise because I feel so supported. But then also, you this is this is 
so beautiful how you do this. We have a debrief time after a message. So people affirm, you know, the sermon for affirm the worship and testimonies and things that happen in the worship service. If there's any changes that need to happen before the next, you know, we have four more services after that, then those are brought up. And so you, when there's a group, there's like 10, 15 people in the room, you talk to me, everyone's saying things about my message. You in those moments only say positive things about my message. And then when everybody leaves the room, and this isn't every week, but it's some weeks where you'll say, hey man, can I give you one one nugget of insight here? And so you affirm me in front of everybody, but when you have a either a correction or a consideration, you always do it which just when it's just you and me. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I've been surprised at how disciplined you've been for four and a half years to do it that way. I knew any leader would think that's how I have to do it for the first six months or for the first year, but that you still treat our relationship with such respect to still act that way four and a half years later. I, I did not I did not expect that. And honestly did not expect I would still get such great feedback from you. So you look, I do give good feedback. You you are so insightful, <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant feedback. So insightful. So Saturday night you, you said, Hey, here's one thing you said. I think you should consider saying it this way. And you were right. You you gave um you gave great feedback. Then on Wednesday, so that was Saturday, then several days later we had lunch. And sorry, we have lunch once a month. And in this lunch, I you have a list. I, I typically have a list of notes on my phone. I had one thing I was wrestling with, I'm just to be specific, tell tell the audience what it is. I I wanted to to share about year in giving, which our church was super generous, and we we were we had our best year in giving ever, which was awesome, is awesome. But I also wanted to share about purchasing Mariner Santa Ana, which is one of which is a building uh, in a city in Orange County that where one of our congregations meets, and we're in the process of purchasing that. And I was bundling the, that communication together. And I, and I ran it through with you, and you said, Eric, but I love both of those. Both of those are great. Those are two different communications. And so I listened and thought, man, he's right. He's right. Those, I'm, I'm muddling those together. So I moved one of the communications up a week and the other, the other back a week, and the answer is better. So I'm, the pleasant surprise is I, st- I feel comfortable asking you four and a half years in, you care enough to still tell me as opposed to, dude, I don't care about this anymore. I'm <laughs> four and a half years later. Um, and that the church is still winning. Yeah. So, I, so really the the winner from our lunch on Wednesday is the church. The yeah. church got better leadership because of you. But the only reason the ch- church got that better leadership from you is because of our relationship. You know what? Another surprise I just thought of that is to- I never would have anticipated it is my relationship with your daughters. Your daughters love me. They do and love you. They, I, I've yeah. taken them to Israel. Uh, we went, where else did we go? Went somewhere else. But but traveling with them in the two-thirds world and doing stuff is so fun because I get to be around them. And they're always, I'm a curiosity, I think, to them because yes. it's like, oh, you're the pastor before. Pastor Kent. Who are they're you? Pastor they Kent. Do. Yeah, they yep. do. And I love that relationship. And it is, I never would have. I never would have anticipated they think, it. They think you are fun, and you are fun. I am fun. You actually are more fun on trips than you are oh, when it, we're it, fun on trips. in regular life. Yeah. I'm not saying you're not fun in regular life, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's I fun on steroids it. on That's trips. Right. Got it. But that was the fun thing, and with K too. So just, uh, you know, it isn't just our relationship. It's with your family, and and it's I love seeing them at the church. They, you know, they they make a point of talking to me, and they, you know, they're both very different. Yep. But they're very comfortable with me. And they are. Ari. So that was a surprise. I had a pleasant surprise for me is been seeing how excited you are when Mariners has a victory yeah. in the realm of God answering a prayer or um, a vision being fulfilled of something we had. I can tell it's it's not just nodding that you're okay with it. I, I really can tell you are ecstatic that this new congregation we launched is is doing well or that a new congregation launched in north san diego county 
the the enthusiasm that you have around those things has been a surprise for me. And mm-hmm. you, it's been more than supportive. You've been excited about oh, it. And like I said, it's my greatest thrill. I'm not sitting on the sidelines. I'm a part of it. I get to be a part of it, which is what a gift from God. What a gift from you. Who would want to miss it? So, you know, one of the things I would hope somebody that was listening to it as they're thinking about succession someday, people dread it. You shouldn't dread it. I, I'm having the time of my life. Right. Everything about my life. I love talking to you about the church. I love hearing about the, you know, you got issues and money. Thing, and I love walking out going, it's not mine anymore. Yeah. I'm out. One, you know? one, of the, <laughs> one of the most fun moments is Ken will come to the office and, you know, if we have a meeting at one and he gets there at 1255 and I'm wrapping up a meeting and he can tell it's intense, he'll be like, I'm so glad that whatever it is you're meeting about, I don't have to know. <laughs> I and I don't yeah. want to know. And and so that's that's the fun part. But so I love... I love what I did, yep. and I wouldn't want to miss any of it. But I love where I am, and I love what I'm getting to do, and I couldn't do that unless I made the change. Mm-hmm. And and then to get to see you and be a part of what you're doing, it I you know you can't orchestrate it, couldn't make it happen. I couldn't come in negotiating for that. That's only a gift that you can give. But I have to be the right person because, I mean, there's so many things I could have said, so many things I could have done totally. that would have ruined it. And you would have had to go, you'd have had to throw me out. You would have had to in a gracious way. And I would have had to walk out. So I'm so glad we never, the, 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 here's another thing. We've never even gotten close to that line. Whatever, wherever that line is, no. it, it's a far, far away oh, from. Stay way, way from. Yeah, we've stayed far away from that line. It is. So you got to be willing to suck up whatever it is because nothing I mean, you look at the value of that compared to any little thing. There's nothing. There isn't one decision or anything you've done to me that is that important compared to that, the the value of being a part Man, of what's going on. So, so it's like that. those are one and two things compared to a 10 win yeah. year. So I, I got a couple more that are co- they're coming to my mind. I have been surprised, and this has been pleasant because our relationship's gone so well at Four and a half years in, how much the healthy transition still matters to our church. Yeah, I am too. It it still matters four and a half years later. It does, when I am shocked by that. We had an elder transition off, um, so people serve on our elder board for four years at a time. And Chris Morris, who's an awesome elder, love the guy. His wife, Catherine, they're amazing. He had his, we call it a swan song, basically his last charge to the elders as he was rotating off. And he goes around and affirms everybody all in, in just an awesome way. He looks at me and says, this is after being, being me being his pastor four and a half years now. Mm-hmm. He says, I want to affirm you in how you have treated Kenton. Mm-hmm. You, your honoring of him gave a sense to, to high level leaders in the church that they could play here and have a part here because you weren't threatened by Kenton and you not being threatened by Kenton gives permission for other leaders to be, to be strong leaders. Yeah. Um, you honoring Kenton sent, so, sent, sent a signal about your uh, humility and your integrity. And then he said, and then, and Kenton's relationship with you, you know, people always wondered would Kenton be able to take his hands off the wheel yeah. and that you guys have a great relationship. It's just been so beautiful for our church to see. That's an elder four and a half years later. I know. I am shocked. You know, I don't. I would say weekly. That might be too much, but it seems like weekly somebody comes up to me that is a leader, and usually a leader in business, and they're just aware of all the dynamics, and they make a thoughtful comment right. about, "I got to tell you how proud I am yep. of the church. So proud of what Eric's doing. So proud of you. However, you guys have managed it. Whatever is behind." Go- I just love that you're doing it. Thank you. But they make a point of saying thank you. And I would have thought if you'd asked me, oh, maybe that goes for six months. Right. But nothing like it is. So, yeah. What does that say? So for a listener, yeah, what, what's the good. learning? What's the deeper learning there? Well, yeah. why are people still four and a half years later valuing a healthy transition so much? Well, sadly, the brokenness in society, the easy answer would be Families are broken. People yeah. leave. Uh, relationships are expendable. They're used to um, people treating each other poorly, walking yes. away and saying that's it, yep. and then seeing the destruction. And, and then it's almost the, the C.S. Lewis quote, you know, you, 
you know a line's crooked because you know there's a straight line. Yeah. So we're given, we're not perfect, but we're given people a picture of a healthy relationship that they so badly want. They do. And so I think against them hope. I think one of the things is, I think people would say, if they could be most honest, churches should do that this way. If anybody yes. should get it right, churches should get it right. And you'd love to say, I don't know the percentages, you'd have a greater sense of what's going on in the country, but it sure doesn't seem like we get it right. And why, I, why I'm so committed to talking about it, working hard, giving up whatever I have to get up, give up, because when it's working, it is, it is probably one of the most powerful things in the greater community. People that don't even go to our church will comment to me and say, oh man, I've heard you guys done such a great job. Wow. So, so just uh, the idea of who, yeah. who you are in the community, churches should do this well. That's great. And a large church you know, has a big footprint. They're going to look at it. And if we don't do it right, they're going to go, yeah, look at you right. guys. And it's, it's, it's little John 1335, by this, all men will know you're my disciples by the love that you have for right. one another. Like it should be different in the and church. they long for it. So I yeah. think that's a reason for it. Um, what, what do you think? There's the, the hunger for health, yeah. uh, the hunger for healthy relationships, seeing a picture of it, it is maybe the longing of the story of the gospel, longing for there to be unity, longing yeah. for, there, for the world to be made right, longing for renewal, you know? Right. Yes. And so, again, we're not perfect, but sending, oh. but giving p people a, a healthy relationship is a gift. Right. All right. Another pleasant surprise for me. I knew I would always be able to gain wisdom from you in old situations, meaning something you had been through before. But it's a reminder that leadership's transferable. You led for a long time, but you never led through a pandemic. But yet you offered so much wisdom to me leading through a pandemic, even though you had not led through a pandemic. I, I underestimated, even though I'd spoken about this and even written about this, about how much leadership's transferable. There were a lot of leadership principles of, because you led during startup years at Mariner Church, you led during transition years from one facility to another, from a name change to a merger. I mean, you led through a lot of seasons. So you had lessons there that had application for current context. I think that's been a pleasant surprise for me that not only are you available for plays you've run, but even plays you haven't run because you have wisdom for for new plays because of just the leadership muscles of running the old place. Ooh, that's kind of you to say. And I do feel that because I agree with you. Leadership is transferable. And what you know, you do know. And a lot of what I know, there's very few people that want to know what a pastor knows, which is leading a church, leading yeah. a congregation, which is different than business and other things. I mean, many of those principles are transferable, but most of what I know translates to a church. Another pleasant surprise for me has been, I don't know why this is true. You, you can probably tell me why you think it's true because you you really are an expert counselor. Why do I not feel threatened when I'm in a meeting that you're leading? So I, I wondered if I would have to ugh, take it, you know, like I'm going to honor him and he's going to be leading this meeting, but, but secretly I'm going to be wondering why I'm not leading the meeting. But I'm in meetings frequently that you, that you lead. For example, we had a Saturday night, we had a reunion for the, the bus that we were on in Israel. I didn't say anything in the meeting. You led the entire meeting. Right. And... Well, and led the whole trip to Israel. You led the whole trip. I didn't feel threatened. I only played on that trip where you asked me to. I submitted to your leadership that entire trip and completely enjoyed it. Right. I enjoyed not being in charge. Yeah. What, what is that? Well, I think it's healthy for you. I mean, one is, I think that shows your strategic nature of, I know where I need to be leading and I'm going to be all in in those moments. And I think if, if I crowded into a moment like that, you, that wouldn't be okay with you. And I think I'm smart enough to know where those That's moments true. are. So they're not you are, like, you are. they're just any leadership moments. Right. So where I'm leading. Like staff meetings or elder meetings, you, you know, yeah. you're not in those. I you're, right. you're right. It wouldn't be a part and wouldn't want to. Well, you brought me to a staff meeting to talk about a certain topic. Yes. But it's like, this is what I need from you, Kenton. Would you do that? That's totally appropriate. I'm happy to do that. But I think given it, like, okay, 
we're going to go on a mission trip or do that, or I'm going to Israel. So, so there's a, a place that, that I am leading. I think all great leaders, I think one of the reasons why I was a great leader is I knew how to follow. I worked in a church before I became a senior pastor. Yes. I understood what it meant to be a great staff person. And I yes. said, and I was when I worked for someone. I, I submit, when I, when I, Tom Rainer, my boss at Lifeway, Rick Blackwood, my boss in Miami, I, I submitted to them, followed right. them, busted my And there's a joy in it because you're saying, I know what my responsibility is here. I'm going to do that and enjoy it. And then when it is my responsibility to lead, then you're all in. So I think you've got a good sense of what that is. And that, and I think the other thing is um, I, I'm super aware and am sensitive to my position. I am what I am. I'm pastor emeritus. I am not the senior pastor. I don't want any, I don't want anybody coming to me about any day-to-day things. I don't want to be involved in these things. And so you can't speak to something you're not going to be in the game for or on the team for. So I'm on the team for these big things with you, but I'm not on the team for anything else. So I shouldn't be talking to it. And I don't want to lead that. And, And practically just for the predecessors who are listening, even though you led that that whole Israel meeting, there's multiple times. I never asked you to do this. I've never one time had to ask you to do this. You are saying sentences of, hey, I'm so excited about what Eric and I are planning for future Israel trips and what we're going to talk about. You, you make it clear that we're, we're a team. Oh, I even worded it. We're saying Eric has decided. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited so that they yeah. see this is an Eric decision yeah. and I'm happy to join him in it. But it was Eric's decision, not mine. That's how you do it. That's you do. Right. You constantly, you constantly send that signal. There's a book uh, years ago that Max Dupree, a leadership author, wrote, and and I think it was Leadership Jazz, or maybe it's Leadership as an Art. He he had two books, Leadership Jazz and Leadership as an Art. He had a whole chapter called Roving Leadership, where great leaders are at times willing for someone else on the team to lead that meeting or lead that initiative, and it's roving leadership. So someone else on your team carries the ultimate authority for this project or this plan or this um, initiative that's going to be implemented. I, that, that's how I feel with with you. There's things that, man, I'm so grateful that you can be the roving leader and lead because of your credibility and your expertise and and because of our relationship. So I, I've i not at all struggled, and this has been a pleasant surprise, with you leading things. I, mean, I enjoy you leading things. Yeah. I think you do. I think there's a huge, you are a highly charactered, very trust Dean person. I mean, I wouldn't want to cross you on trusting because I think once trust is hurt, you, you go hard, but you think I go hard once trust is hurt. <laughs> yeah. I think when somebody busts your trust, you, you go hard, but, but in that, what I've enjoyed is as I'm around, I have a sense you're trusting me in every That's conversation and I want to act trustworthy You do so that in every conversation, no one ever feels anything less than that. But I'm also mindful that it's like, it's a gift that you give and I don't ever want to presume on it because I think to break that would, it just would be super damn. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be around doing that. Cause I think it would, it would, I yeah. just don't think you come back from that. But I don't want to do the, that to you either. I, I enjoy the, don't. the fruit of, of our relationship so much. I, I don't want to jeopardize that at all. Yeah. It's worth it. The, all the pain, all the energy, the hard work I think we did on the front end getting ready for it, me getting ready for it, then the hard work that you've done uh, in being in a situation that's challenging, you know, where you're, you're trying to balance, okay, I want to honor the past, but at the same time move forward. All of that is so worse that when you look at where we yes. are today, I'm shocked at the return. I, I'd, I would have loved to believe yeah. That the return is as much as it is. It's more than I anticipated, Amen. ever wrote down, ever articulated in the community, in the life of the people, in all those things. It's, and where the church is today. That's so beautiful. Goodness, where the church is today, it's amazing. It, it means so much to me to hear that. I'm so grateful to hear that. I feel the same way. The cost is significantly less than the return <laughs> and the pleasant surprises and the blessing. You've been listening to the Eric Geiger Leadership Podcast. Thanks for joining us. God bless.